Another Monday morning, the beginning of a fresh week inside the simulation. This week we will almost certainly be played by bastards, blackguards, beastly bitches, socialists, (laughs) male feminists, vegans. They'll come at you. They'll come at you head on. They're always going to be there. It's about how you deal with them. Don't take any guff off these swine. Don't take any wooden nickels. Don't let the bastards grind you down. It's what life's all about. Life is suffering. But it's how you pick up that suffering and deal with it. It's how you bear your own personal cross. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Monday morning. It is the 14th of January, 2019. The year of the uh, socialist vegan CrossFit box in your mum's double garage. Mm. Oh, Wesley Snips is here, my emotional support lobster. Uh, I'm legally allowed to take him on air travel. I've got a note from my doctor, from uh, Dr. P. He's, uh, he's actually a qualified um, medical practitioner. Not a lot of people know that. Most people think he was just just out there making noisy jump up, but he's actually here to prescribe you anything you want. Literally, he's a real pushover. You want Xanax, he's got it. You want Percocets, he'll write you out a month's prescription at once. He's out of control. He needs to be stopped. Ladies and gentlemen, it is six minutes past ten. You're out here listening to Coffee and Memes. Steady job, a couple extra lobsters. That's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slubby. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's 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 kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. The lobster patriarchy has many of the top memes. Many of the top memes. Many of the top memes. The lobster patriarchy has many of the top memes. And that is so true that it's almost unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show on this fine Monday morning. The sun is shining, uh, but it's raining in my heart. No, no, the sun is shining and it is still shining in my heart and out of my arse. It's a fine way to live your life, ladies and gentlemen. A fine way to live your life. So... 48 hours have passed since, uh, no, longer than that. Oh, I don't fucking know. Um, But anyway, there's been a lot of madness, um, the usual madness in the news uh, this weekend. And I'm here to act as a conduit, a segue between the world of weirdness and your mind. And to deliver it to you like a drunk postman. What have we got? Man wins iPhone from claw machine. Turns out it'd be a box of chocolates full of Johnny's. Decent. Florida drug sniffing canine called Jake overdoses while screening passengers boarding holy ship. <laughs> Jake is an absolute mad lad, and he is he's, he's he's having the time of his life. He is having the time of his life. Uh, police hunt for man who stole uh, blue light from top of cop car. U.S. driver in bird box blindfold challenge crashes. Uh, a woman says West Country sex toy exploded in a vice. Um, Toby Carvery customer sprayed also in vice uh, with uh, some sort of cleaning fluid. Uh, woman's bizarre illness means she can't hear men's voices. Oh yeah, flat earthers planning a cruise ship. Mate, hold on a second. Maybe it was the um, flat earther cruise ship. They like to. Well, I mean, let's be honest with you. The flat earthers are obviously on drugs, aren't they? I don't think anyone's going to question that. <clears throat> I mean, once you start questioning the shape of the Earth, I think all bets are off, really, for whether or not you're on the ding dings. <laughs> I mean, has anyone looked into that as a theory? Like, there's your next conspiracy theory. Are flat earthers just on, like, the come down of some sort of really severe TCI binge? <laughs> it's like, no, nah, it's, it's flat, isn't it? Like, look, mate, I think you need to take some 5-HTP, go to Holland and Barrett, get some of that hoardy goat weed, get some St. John's wort, get some 5-HTP, get some Barocca. Dude, you need to calm down. Eat some good food. No junk food. No, no more Deliveroo's. 
come on, look, you need to you need to start getting your circadian sarc- rhythm going back again. It's like, yeah, but if it was round, all the water would fall. Off. Look, 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 come on, look, you've been up for two weeks, okay? Look, we've had a great time, probably best boom town ever, but look, we have to start getting you back into the normal system of living your life. You're gonna have to go back to work soon, all right? Yeah, but why? With the, this, the horizon and that, and you go, no, 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 look, okay, look, drink this Barocca, okay, I'm going to be back tomorrow, make sure you get some sleep, just watch some friends or something, watch some modern family, go on a sort of light, uh, curb your enthusiasm, you know, something light-hearted, I think, I think we've, we may have gone in too deep this time, we're going to have to start raining it in, you need to get some sleep. Yeah, but like when you jump, like the world doesn't... Okay, all right, I'm going to go now. You're going to be all right. If you really need help, call me. Um, people should look into that. Hey, we've got a good old bag of shoe throwers. Good old fine bag of shoe throwers. Got some classic spore in there. Got some new lime wax. Uh, got a bit of more classic high contrast. Um, space funk, inward. Uh, scantia, see the sun. Fanu, recharge, nookie. Um, it's all going on. It's all going on. What should we have? Look, let's, uh, mm, yep, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, lobsters. Lobsters? Um, let's have, look, I'm going to have this little bit of a classic Joe Ford, actually, because it's a really nice bit of gear, and it's undoubtedly going to get rid of the shit, it's going to get rid of the cobwebs, isn't it? Um, actually, now I've reconsidered that, I'm going to have some more classic high contrast, here you go. It's a bit more Monday morning. Caliber and high contrast, Mr. Majestic. Does it get much better than this? Probably not. Indeed, Mr. Majestic, Calibre, High Contrast, Wesley Snips, out here, getting it done. Good, 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 great news. Um, all right, come on, let's do the drug sniffing dog. It's not much to it, you can imagine it. Florida drug sniffing canine called Jake. Shout out Jake, each and every. Overdoses while screening passengers boarding. Holy shit. <sighs> right, so Jake is obviously 
a party dog, isn't he? Let's. I mean, I, I can't get the pictures of him out. Well, he's posted in the Lobster Crew. You can see him. He's an absolute cutie. He is like 10 out of 10 good boy. He is very, very good boy. He's up for a party. He's up for having a good time. He's just keen to get amongst it, get that nose in there, start sniffling around, schnaffling some gear. He's keen. Uh, A drug-sniffing dog working for police in Florida was given anti-overdose medication after ingesting drugs uh, while searching party cruise passengers. The Brevard County Sheriff's Office canine called Jake, shout out Jake, each and every, was screening passengers before Holy Ship an electronic dance music experience taking place on the Norwegian Epic. Last Saturday, more than a dozen people were arrested for trying to bring drugs on board. Oh, dear. Death is a preferable alternative to communism. Well, that was the wrong one, but that'll do for now. Um, Organisers wanted 25 to life. You're gutted, really, aren't you? Go out, holy ship, get get yourself some, some of the best pingers you can find. Arrested. Gutted. Organized listed two, uh, organizers listed two tours this year. On Wednesday, uh, as the second was set to embark, the canine allegedly discovered a batch of druggy wugs before falling suddenly ill. Uh, the dog was given Narcan by a crew member, a narcotic often used to treat overdoses in humans. Jake started having some problems with balance. Uh, it's coming up. Uh, and had some type of seizure. Oh, dear. Uh, some sort of seizure incident of some sort. He was showing the effects of having inhaled some substance. Todd Goodyear, a sheriff's office spokesperson, told WFTV... <laughs> they sound like a legitimate news organisation. Um, oh, no, WFTV, not WTF. All right, anyway. Uh, they administered the Narcan and got him to the vet. Analysis suggested that the pup ingested a form of penga. Wow. Um, News 6, Click Orlando reported Rob McLean, an official for the U.S. Marshal's office, also confirmed the incident had taken place. Canine Jake is in a stable condition and is expected to make a full recovery once he has come down and stopped gurning, drunk some water, taken some 5-HTP and a Barocca. Brevard County Sheriff's Office linked the drugs to a passenger, Leslie Bennett. Oh, I bet Leslie Bennett's gutted about that. She was going to take all them drugs herself. Next thing she knows, Jake's taken half of them. Oh, do you know what he's like? Because you know, dogs are very sniffy, aren't they? What, what's happened is it's Jake's turn to do a line, and then he's just gone and just snorted like all the lines on the CD case all up in one go. <sighs> Jake, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but you're doing yourself a disservice. Booking records posted online show Bennett's. Uh, Bennett of Montana was arrested for felony possession of a controlled substance without prescription and possession of drug paraphernalia and equipment. (sighs) Going in on felony possession. You're looking at uh, at time there, Leslie. In all seriousness, you're looking at time, Leslie Bennett. I hope your dad's got a good lawyer. The suspect was taken into custody on Wednesday and released today. The filing state. Uh, WFTV reported the man uh, was found with pills hidden in his boxers that later tested poli- positive for Penga. Well, wow. over 72% Penga. The Holy Ship Tour will return uh, to the Port Canaveral tomorrow. Um, anyway, yeah, the organisers of Holy Ship say, with their fingers crossed behind, the backs, behind their backs, we don't condone the use of any drugs <laughs> aboard the ship or the bringing of drugs onto the ship. Honest gov. Right, more police news. Police hunt for man who stole blue light from top of car. Um, <laughs> this is quite funny. This, police are tweeting a lot now. Police are sort of getting a bit sassy on social media. That's a thing. And uh, the BTP Tees Valley police force uh, on their official Twitter account. They've got a blue tick and everything. They have tweeted a picture of a man with the blue... Uh, you know, strip light from the top of a police car. He's got it on his shoulder. He looks dead, dead chuffed. Looks very pleased with himself. And they have tweeted, no lighty, no likey. <laughs> and then an emoji of a little emer- red emergency light. It says, we believe this man can help our investigation into the theft of police lights from a car in Sunderland. Yeah, I reckon he might be able to uh, fill you in on a bit of information as to what's happened to your missing light. Uh, he's there. He's clearly... Um, He's high on life. He's high on good times and good cheer and good banter. And he's just, he's, he's, he's loving life. He's got the police light on his shoulder. Everyone's cheering him on. 
uh, but he's been caught on CCTV and is presumably going to get... <laughs> People are rinsing them so hard on Twitter. Ah, uh, this is what Twitter's good for. Like, you know, less, you know, political arguing and bloody unnecessary group thing. There's, there's more just banter with the police. That's what it should be for. Oh, I don't think there's any more um, any more requirements to that one. Um, let's add this. Uh, it's called See the Sun by Scantia. It's on RAM, as far as I know. It's on the uh, RAM 2019 annual, anyway. It's a bit like the Beano annual, but more drum and bass. I presume. I'll type the Canadians in the chat. a little FYI about Bloody Friday's show on YouTube. Friday, it got pulled uh, for the Distress Signal track, Earthquake. Um, so, if anyone knows anyone at Rampage Records, who I believe, Rampage Recordings, uh, who released the record, uh, let them know to have a bloody word with their distributor, that their distributor's got their label marked as pull ev- back, block everything worldwide on YouTube. Uh, so, I mean, you can do that if you want, but you've missed out on maybe six or seven hundred people hearing me go on about how great that record is. So, up to you guys, or you could, or I could, or send me a message saying it's okay to have it, then I can show that to YouTube. It's like a doctor's note, and then they'll let me put it up again, which would be nice. You know, get in touch. Yes, indeed, that is uh, See the Sun by Scantia. Uh, also, last week's Rankins records will be up on iTunes, up on the Rankin and Friends podcast later on today. While we're in the mood for housekeeping, tomorrow night is our live event, Thresholds live event at the Hoxton Bar and Kitchen in Shoreditch. Untangling man- mental health in music, me, Tim Exile, Scientific, Benverse. Uh, just be a bunch of geezers just talking about life. Uh, now, we will be talking about the issues facing producers, artists, DJs, people in the music industry, people in creative industries in general, really, and the mental health aspects, what can be done, what where stuff goes wrong, how can we make stuff better for us, for those that rely on us, 
And, you know, for, for society as a whole, I reckon one podcast, that'll sort the whole bloody thing out. Am I right, Snip? Sorry. Fucking hell. Uh, that's, yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, look, let's get into a few, bit more of these uh, things. Uh, US driver in bird box blindfold challenge crashes, unsurprisingly. Um, so this is more police tweeting. The Leighton police in um, Utah, they tweet, Bird box challenge while driving, predictable result. <laughs> Just a picture of two smashed up cars. This happened on Monday as a result of a driver covering her eyes while driving on Leighton Parkway. Luckily, no injuries. So this is um it's always is it just usually January or February when the sort of the meme injuries start to happen. It was this time last year that the Tide Pod Challenge emerged. So is this gonna be like a beginning of the year sort of annual event whereby people take memes seriously and just start uh, start injuring themselves? So I mean is this year is it gonna be that all this these kids look a bit bird boxy? They look a bit tide poddy, look a bit bird boxy. I don't know. Again, not much more to, to get into on this, but, but yeah, long story short, Lass and her mates were driving along and thought it would be a good idea to put blindfolds on while driving. Bird Box Challenge. And they crashed. So, yeah. And it, they seem to have crashed, like, yeah, at a significant speed, I guess. Enough to basically write off two cars. Yeah. She was only 17, uh, driver. 17. And stupid as the day is long. <laughs> My God. My God. Measure food with your fist. Go the fuck off. Um, okay, man wins iPhone from Claw Machine. Turns out to be a box of chocolates full of Johnnies. So that's a bit of fun, isn't it? And there's a full story goes on in here. I mean, I don't think there's much point in reading it. We all know those claw machines in the arcade that are just generally a stitch up. And this one seems to be even more of a stitch up uh, than the others. Where was this? Uh, Indonesia. Anyway, it looks like they're boxes of the brand new iPhone XS, I believe, and they're in there. And matey, he, he's he, he's done it. He's got it. He's won himself an iPhone. He's dead fucking chuffed. He opens it up. No, no such iPhone inside. Instead, it is they have converted the iPhone box to actually to have like dividers in it, like a box of chocolates. And they put chockies in there that look like Ferrero Rochers. But then, on even closer inspection, when you think, oh, well, gutted that I didn't get the iPhone, but box of Ferrero Ro Rochers, quids in, you open them up, and they ain't Ferrero Rochers. They're Johnny's, made to look like Ferrero Rochers. So, I mean, God, what an emotional roller coaster. I mean, nice to have, like, eight, eight or so Johnny's. That's useful, isn't it? I mean, presumably, with that story in your in your skyrocket, you're going to be out slinging dick within an hour or so, aren't you? You rock up like rock up around the amusement arcade. A, listen, look how good I am at playing the claw game. That's like, that's an immediate, like, bumps you up the bloody sexual hierarchy. Two, box of Ferrero Rochers. That's another rung up the ladder. Three, actually Johnny's. You just like, oh, man, ultimate alpha male at that point, aren't you? You're just going to be... You're going to need all eight of those Johnnies. Whew, damn. Anyway, best of luck to him. God bless. What else we got? Woman says West Country sex toy exploded in her face. Well, if you will, heat up a pasty in a microwave. West Country pasty. West, con West Country sex toy. I haven't had enough coffee today. Maybe I've had too much. Don't know. I can't work it out. Anyway, woman says West Country sex toy. Why is it West Country sex? What's, what's West Country about it? Um, oh, it's just from a West Country company. I wouldn't trust a sex toy made in the West Country. What's it going to be made out of? Fool's gold and coal and the ends of pasties? Clotted cream? <laughs> oh, I don't trust it. Uh, I was holding it close to my face. It could have hit my eyes. Why have you got it close to your face? What are you doing with it? I, I suspect user error. A woman claims the battery in her brand new sex toy bought from a West Country company. This is the Devon Live news that's reporting it. So it's just like, take a news and just do anything you can to try and give it a West Country spin. It's like, I don't know if anyone's ever watched Welsh TV. Like, there's some like, Welsh TV channels. And literally, like, every programme is just about how great it is to be Welsh. Like, why is it, why is it fine for, like, the Welsh to be, like, super nationalistic? And it's like, oh, that's sweet. They're adorable. They're Welsh. God bless them. Aren't they sweet? And then as soon as any, any English people are like, oh, you racist scum. Doesn't make any sense. 
and the Cornish, they think they're a race. They're not. It's a county. <laughs> they're out of control. Oh. Lobsters. Oh, it's just... I'm in a weird mood this morning. It's fine. <laughs> Is there someone at the door? Hello. Hello, good morning. Sorry to bug you. And there's a Nigerian that does printing. Is there a what, sorry? A Nigerian guy who does a printing. Oh, uh, not in this room. Here. I don't know. Maybe a little I'm bit further here. around the corner. I've only been in here for two weeks. Yeah, I think yeah. it was, yeah. I'm in, I'm in the middle of a radio show, but... Uh, oh, sorry. No worries. <laughs> Take it easy. Anyway, apparently there used to be a printing company in here. Not anymore, though. Right, okay, let's play some records. Where are we? All right, let's play. This is a new bit. Uh, this is on the same EP, Black Label EP by Fanu. Uh, it's on Metalheads. It's called Recharge. And uh, it's a nice bit of gear, actually. It's a little bit tougher than the other one. <laughs> oh, that was a bit of fun. I should probably get one of those, like, broadcasting, please do not disturb signs. <laughs> Bless him, he's an absolute sweetheart. No, you're right, a red light on the door might attract some slightly different disturbances. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think they've just been exposed for my extremely complex printing scam that I'm running out of here. So how we keep the lights on? Uh, Rankin, you don't have to put on your red light. Hey, Dilly's in the chat. I would consider this to be tech step. Definitely ain't neurofunk.
Last Recharge by Fanu. Some metalheads, it's on the Black Label EP, and that's, uh, that's a nice bit of gear. <laughs> I just, I just, oh, God, I'm still in the flap after that dig. I was in a flap before that dig came in, and now I, I don't even know if I'm going to make it to the end of the show. Um, yeah, so we got broken off um, midway through this uh, West Country sex toy explosion. <laughs> Why does it have to be West Country? Oh, God. Um, she claims the battery, which appeared to, appears to have corroded, I don't know, I've skipped, I've moved on a little bit. Anyway, look, <clears throat> we'll start from the beginning. <laughs> Lobsters. Um, a woman claims the batteries in her brand new sex toy brought from a West Country company exploded, launching it into the ceiling. Wow. Um, Cassie Esplin, 25, was just about to use her buzz tongue finger vibrator sold by a West Country company. All right, we get it. This the company makes it from the West Country. When she claimed the battery pack flew out with such force it hit the bedroom ceiling. She claims the battery, which appears to have been corroded, then landed on her top, scorching her jumper and leaving marks on her chest. Single Cassie <laughs> uh, said the metal missile felt like she had been punched in the chest and left a black mark on her bedroom ceiling. I want to see a picture of the uh, ceiling. Um... The car dealership worker said, I was going to try it for the first time, and it made a really loud bang. I just froze. I was so shocked. I just thought, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> I was holding it close to my face, and it could have hit my eyes. I could have, I could have been blinded by a four-pound sex toy. Ah, see, there's your problem right there. Um, it's the, the, the <laughs> four pounds for a sex toy. If you're going to put something with four that costs you four quid and has batteries in it if you're going to put that up inside yourself i'm not saying you deserve it i'm definitely not saying that i'm just saying that you know you pay peanuts get monkeys thank god i wasn't using it. it could have caused some serious damage yeah damn right um cassie bought a new sex toy reduced from 12 pounds to four pounds even 12 pounds i just i think i just feel like you should be paying over 25 quid i feel like that is the sort of real like base level that you should be paying for something that you're going to insert inside yourself you really should be looking for quality really quality should be the focus there you know you, if you want to get multiple uses out of it i mean you've only got to use it 25 times to make it like a quid a wank you look come on um sex act is making women deaf and doctor thinks he knows why well, that sounds like fun um I don't know how much more there is to this uh it's got a picture of the marks on her chest although i'm no, I, I'm, I'm not buying it. That could be anything. It's pathetic. Uh, see, oh, the battery definitely has corroded. No pictures of the blackness on the ceiling. I feel like she might be making it up uh, in order to, to smear this West Country sex toy company. Perhaps she works for a rival one. I don't know. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, this uh, Sticking with Devon Live website, there's a few stories here that are worth investigating there's this one here it's the headline at the side of the page and it says cafe workers trapped in sinking car as water reaches their necks why are you reporting on this and not helping them that sounds like it's like this is a live thing and they're just some journalists are just standing there like tapping away like oh yep yeah, that's water's up to their necks now yeah now they, they do seem to be trapped that car is sinking anyway this is going to make a great story but then when i click on that it don't go anywhere it says that the link's broken so maybe they died i don't know uh Angry Plymouth woman's 14 months of hell working for Royal Mail. Um, yep, pictures of her here. She looks every bit the disgruntled postie. Uh, she looks absolutely razzed off. It's a shame I can't get her up on the screen. I mean, if you just go to Devon Live and type in angry Plymouth woman, <laughs> you know, you will get a picture of an angry woman from Plymouth. Um, disgruntled Royal Mail employee has claimed she endured 14 months of hell working for the company. Plymouth Posty, Candy Kappeling, says she endured a catalogue of problems and has been forced to quit the job she used to love. <sighs> Damn, this is good news. This is, I mean, not it's not good news, but it's like it's a, it's a great bit of news. She claims management complained that she was too slow delivering mail when she started in October 2017. Wow. Uh, but things spiralled when she accidentally forgot to electronically scan a parcel she delivered to a customer. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> she, uh, but th uh, the Prince Rock woman admitted to being at fault and was told to wise up. <laughs> 
before she got caught up in a stressful situation with another delivery. So what the headline should read, incompetent postie has to step down due to incompetence. Incompetent Plymouth postie razzed off with not being able to work due to lack of competence. She says, uh, Candy33 said she left a parcel intended for someone with their neighbour, but the recipient reported, as, reported it as missing, despite being left a note explaining where it was. Pfft, wow. Um, she said Royal Mail Chiefs demanded she went back round to the neighbour's house to find it and find out what went wrong before it was accused that the parcel had a hole in it. <laughs> wow, this is... God, this is a real Greek tragedy, isn't it? She said that she, she was left seething after being wrongly accused of not scanning a parcel which wasn't even part of her round. Wow, sounds like they're just sort of trying to force her out. Maybe it's political. It often is with posties. She then claimed that she was hauled before a disciplinary panel involving Royal Mail and Communication Workers Union reps. Boo. Um, and was advised to take up counselling and, and agree to being shadowed, which she thought was unacceptable. These fucking unions, man. Um, stressed Candy said the ordeal forced her to begrudgingly hand in her notice last month. And now wants everyone to know that the job is not as easy as it may seem. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I think probably being a postie is probably quite hard. You've got to get up early, haven't you? That's a pain in the ass. You've got to carry the bag or push the little thing. You've got to wear the shorts. Um, you need those sort of sensible walking boot things. I don't know if they're standard issue or you've got to buy your own. If you've got to buy your own, that's an additional expense. I don't even know whether or not you'd be able to claim that against your tax. Uh, you've got to constantly battle dogs, endlessly battling dogs. Um, so you're going to need some mace, uh, some sort of dog be gone, pooch be gone stick. Uh, that could also double as a thought be gone stick for the male posties that constantly have to battle young women throwing themselves at them. And uh, you got to scan the parcels. You got when people try and sign it, like on the machine, and it's just it's just sort of a blob. Looks like a sort of spider, drunk spider, fell in some ink and just sort of landed on the screen. You got to deal with that. Um, yeah, sounds like a nightmare. I'm surprised she's even alive. Okay, Toby Carvery customer sprayed in eye with cleaner after saying food was cold. Well. If you will fuck about at Toby Carvery, what do you expect? A disabled diner claims he was left humiliated and in agony after a restaurant employee sprayed cleaning fluid into his face. Alan Fisher, 55, accused a staff member at a Sutton Coalfield branch of the Toby Carvery of attacking him uh, with the chemical after an argument over seating and his food. There are pictures of him here, and yeah, it looks, looks rough, man. He's uh, definitely been sprayed in the eyes with cleaning fluid. And is suffering the consequences of that. Uh, Mr. Fisher, who suffers from diabetes and osteoarthritis and walks with sticks, said, The pain was unbelievable. My neighbour took me to hospital and my tear ducts are still inflamed. The way I've been treated is diabolical. I've been totally humiliated. You don't expect that sort of treatment as a disabled person going to a Toby Carvery. However, this is not the first news story about someone, a, a sick person, going to a Toby Carvery and effectively... Uh, experiencing abuse. <laughs> yeah, maybe Toby Carver is the best avoided if you have any sort of... Dis I mean, Toby Carver is the best avoided in general. But, yeah. I mean, if you live up north, I don't know if there's such a thing as an another restaurant. Uh, a Toby Carvery spokesperson says, We do not condone any sort of aggressive or abusive behaviour made toward guests or staff at the restaurant. Okay. Made toward guests or staff at the restaurant. Um, hmm. That smacks a little bit like of Trump's statement about the Charlottesville thing going, eh, good people on both sides. <laughs> We're currently investigating this incident internally. Mr. Fisher from Boldmere claimed that the dispute started when he sat at a table he had cleared with his neighbour, Amy Hunt, and was then told it was reserved. After refusing to leave the table on the 23rd of December, he then complained about the shortage of cutlery and the coldness of his lamb main course. All right, he's a problem customer. He probably deserved what he got. <laughs> Uh, he alleged that he was sprayed with the cleaning fluid while attempting to record the verbal exchange with a staff member. Okay, he he's trouble. All right, I I take that. I think I think he deserves it, and I think actually he could have. Hmm, I think spraying with the cleaning fluid and then they had a mop or something out the back. Bit of that in the face. <laughs> Dirty mop in the face. Um, Mr. Fisher added, "I've spoken to a senior manager later." 
who said it was an incident, an accident. Oh, I spoke to a senior manager later who said it was an accident, but I was no way near the table when it happened. I was near the bar. Mr. Fisher claimed the staff member shouted, and a Merry Christmas to you, when he was being thrown out of the restaurant. Sounds like these, these Toby Carvery stuff, don't, couldn't they give a fuck? The incident is alleged to have happened at the Carvery on Chester Road, which is also known as the Park and Clerk. Police are investigating. Well, sounds like six and one half a dozen of the other. <laughs> yeah, good people on both sides. <laughs> uh, okay, um, how about a oh, new bit of uh, lime wax here? It's naughty. Just FYI. Larry Lime Wax on this one. Excited for the release later in the year of the Prospect sex toy of a dildo in the shape of Lime Wax's head. Prospect branded sex toy. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Anyway, that's Acetate by Lime Wax. Fine bit of gear. I think it's on his label. What's that? L3. Uh, L33, L, L pop, L, L, uh, yeah. Anyway, woman's bizarre illness means she can't hear men's voices. <sighs> this is a new low for feminism. Uh, a woman has been diagnosed with a bizarre medical condition, which she claims leaves her deaf to the voices of men. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, the patient who has been named as Chen said she felt sick and could hear ringing in her ears the night before and thought going to sleep might help. Uh, but when she woke up, she panicked when she realised she was unable to hear her boyfriend talking to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she took herself to hospital uh, in the city of uh, Zymen, East China, and quickly realised that she could hear her female doctor's voice perfectly. Ear, nose and throat expert uh, Lin uh, Zhuo King, I've got no chance, said, She was able to hear me when I spoke to her, but when a young male patient walked in, she couldn't hear him at all. Uh, Dr. Lin diagnosed her with a condition known as low-frequency hearing loss. After Chen said that she had been working late recently, putting her body under stress and not getting enough sleep, Dr. Lin believes fatigue and the added stress of long days may have contributed to the condition, uh, which cause a loss of sensitivity to deeper sounds, which only allowed her to hear sharper, higher-frequency sounds, such as the voices of women. I think that's a 
awful generalisation about women. <sighs> that they have... High voice is actually a social construct. Um, the, e the ear, nose and throat specialist revealed it is important to treat such symptoms quickly. Added that she expected Chen to make a full recovery. Well, you know, I wish her all the best. Um, it does sound like a, a, frankly, a tawdry excuse for almost certainly just... Uh, it, it, I would imagine her and the boyfriend have had an argument and she is it's one of those ones where like you're in the middle of the arguing and then you realise oh fuck I'm actually in the wrong here shit but you don't want to give up your side of the argument you've got no if I keep going maybe eventually they'll admit defeat and you know even like it's one of those arguments where you actually look stuff up on Wikipedia Wikipedia has proven you wrong you then go down the line of yeah well anyone could put anything on Wikipedia Wikipedia means nothing you know you're in that sort of territory and now she's scared <laughs> she's played the trump card of what was that huh so I, I can't hear you oh it appears I have a rare medical condition where I can't hear men's voices oh well what are you gonna do son of a bitch um okay flat earth news uh, my arch nemesis Jasper Hamill who I've sort of warmed to recently but I don't know he's still got a long way to go before he gets into my good books Flat Earthers planning a cruise ship conference conference, but will they fall off the planet's edge if you truly believe the world was flat you'd probably want to avoid this edge oh it's edge currently Flat Earthers believe that the planet is fringed by a kind of ice wall but then they're not going to fall off the edge then if it's got an ice wall on it are they Jasper Hamill you fucking moron well, that's a bit harsh. Sorry, sorry, Jasper Hammer. You know, I'm, I don't want to have to. I'm getting dragged down to your level, quite honestly. And uh, I, yeah, sorry. Uh, currently, flat earthers believe the planet is fringed by a kind of ice wall, rather than terminating in a huge drop into empty space. Well, so then they won't fall off the planet. Uh, Jasper Hammer. Look into it. Um, but still, if you're planning to sail off on the ocean aboard a huge cruise ship. The thought of the ocean ending might give you pause for thought. We're expecting this to be on the minds of all the attendees of the Flat Earth Conference being planned for November. So is the plan that they're going to get this... I mean, if they can... If you could find a, a captain, an admiral, a commodore, or, you know, a driver, the ferry pilot, a uh, big boat, boat driver. What do you call it? Who drives a captain? Yeah, captain. Cruise ship captain. Captain, Captain. There was also a flat earther. I think that might be quite difficult to find as uh, someone who has had to deal with, you know, navigating the earth, circumnavigating the world. They'd probably be like, yeah, no, no, it's 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 just a ball. It's it's a globe. It's it's not. Flat. Well, I don't know. Maybe look, or at least you find get someone who can learn how to drive a boat, <laughs> drive a yeah, who can drive a big ferry. Find someone who can drive a big ferry. Get all your other flat earthers on board. Then get, yeah, get, then just, you know, head out onto the high seas. You've got enough food for a couple of months or something. See if you can get to the edge. That's the plan, isn't it? That would work. Which way are you going to go? Up, down, left, right? Wait, come on. Anyway. Uh, the Flat Earth International Conference aims to uncover and debunk pseudoscientific facts. Look into it. Uh, while setting out uh, the true evidence which shows... Earth exi exists on a flat, stationary plane. Aside from the risk of coming a cropper on the world's end, there's also the very serious chance that the cruise will make people see the error, believing the Earth is flat because the ship's navigation requires re <laughs> relies on the planet being round. Yes. Ships navigate based on the principle that the Earth is round. Henk Kija, a 23-year veteran cruise ship captain, told The Guardian, <laughs> nautical charts are designed with that in mind, that the Earth is round. The world, <laughs> the world is charted by a large fleet of sat satellites which zoom around it. The US government maintains at least 24 to power its GPS system, for instance. If it were flat, we would only need a handful of spaceships because they wouldn't have to go behind the globe. Here's what the Flat Earth, flat Earth International Conference says about its beliefs. We maintain that the Earth is flat and stationary. But we're born into this. But we weren't born into this way of thinking. Like you, we grew up believing in a heliocentric globe Earth model. After extensive experimentation, analysis, and research, we have come to the truth to know the truth of our cosmology, and it is not what we have been told. Look into it. Uh, 
its reassurance, its reassured potential cust uh, customers that they will not fall off the edge, and added, though there are varying models within the flat Earth community, the most commonly depicted model uh, of Earth is a circular disk with Antarctica serving as an ice wall barrier. Well, it's good to know. I mean, if they could combine that and holy ship and then get Jake on, the drug dog, um, once he's come down, maybe he'll be ready for some more ding-dings. I'd, like um, I'd like to get on board that. I think that would be a fun party because obviously the Flat Earthers, they're into drugs, aren't they? You know, they're into... Poor Jasper Hamill. He never gets any shares on his story. Bless him. 22 shares on that. No, that is rough, isn't it? And then one about, like, I don't know, sticking bloody lush bath bums up your vag. You'll have, like, 17 million shares. I feel bad for you, son. Got 99 problems, but limited shares on my Metro articles. Ain't one. Right, let's have... All oh, right, I think it's probably time now for some classic spore, isn't it? I mean, we haven't had any yet. Well, in fact, to play us out. Supernova. A little lifted classic. I also seem to have lost the ability to read. That's it's time to go back to bed. Joe in the chat, I think you're right. I mean, it really has, this show has had all the hallmarks of um, a full-scale drug experience condensed down into a single hour. Started off sort of gently, you know, just getting involved and then, whoa, okay, things are getting weird. And then it sort of peaked when that dude came in and then uh, it's gradually coming down and down. And now my brain is just sort of not really on, on full form. And uh, off to bed. Live to fight another day tomorrow. Oh, Mr. Spore, why are your tunes so good?
Yes, indeed. Spore Supernova. Woo! <laughs> uh, I did like Mr. Merck's idea of playing some off-key tracks. Uh, maybe a couple of times a week we'll have a little off-key classic. That'd be nice. Um, it's very, uh, very inaccessible, <laughs> as drum and bass goes. That sort of off-key technoid sound. It's not one that you can play to a sort of non-drum and bass fan and go, Look, hey, listen to this, I think you'll like this. Like, no, I don't like this at all. Yes, Paul released that la his last album on um, like Pirate Bay or one of the equivalents, BitTorrent. It did, uh, hey look, I love him more than, more than most, but it did feel a little bit like that album was kind of like, well here's all the stuff that's been on my computer for the last four years that I hadn't quite got round to finishing or releasing. Well, just bundle it all into a big BitTorrent thing. And there were some good bits on there, but hey, you know, maybe I'm just uh, too desperately in love with the mid-noughties lifted shoe throwers you know I'm just a jaded old man now seen I've heard one too many Neurofunk records it's one too many right look it's time to uh, it's the end of the show it's time to shout out the VIP list a list of fine fine bad motherfuckers who are supporting Threshold and Coffee and Memes on Patreon they're donating every month to help me keep doing this help me keep doing this help Help me keep, help to keep me doing this every morning and help to grow Threshold. This is Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, Michael Kozitsky, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbart, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heischelbeck, John Finnison, the BDR crew, Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief Cooper, Gennady Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squiffington, and Liam, the menace Underwood. Ooh <laughs> Liam, fresh off the back of his double banning from the Lobster Crew group, has now thrown down the gauntlet by getting his name on the VIP list. He's thrown it down to Joe and Sam, saying, listen, boys, yeah, you can ban me, but you'll never, you'll never squash, that you'll never squash a true lobster. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. You can't argue with that. Maybe he's back in, his, back in my good books. Maybe he can weasel his way back in there. I don't know. Maybe anything's possible. Anything's possible. It is 2019, after all. And shit is getting bad boxy. Right, look, guys, thank you. I will be back at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Remember, tickets still on sale for tomorrow night's event in Shoreditch. 8 o'clock it starts. Me, Scientific, Tim Exile. Ben Verse, we're talking about mental health in music. It's going to be a good show. There's going to be lots of lobsters there. I'll be there dishing out hugs and, and pints afterwards. And uh, it, it, it will be it'll be enjoyable. I, I, I promise you that. And we can cuddle. I uh, might even dish out hand jobs in the disabled toilet. It's the kind of guy I am. So, look, until tomorrow, be good lobsters. You know, just concentrate on yourself. Concentrate on doing good. Concentrate on working hard, making good art. I'm trying to find the meaning in this crazy, mixed up world. Right. Anyway, thank you. Love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.